All right, every guys, uh, I wasn't going to do a video on this, but I came up with some ideas on how to do an upgrade here that may help some folks out. I'm going to put the loom illuminated badges. This is the front Dodge emblem on the grill here that will be illuminated. Um, it says loom on the box, but uh, there's the website if you want to look at getting this, xloom.com. It was about $190, uh, not, no shipping, no taxes. Uh, pretty expensive upgrade. It's not an easy upgrade in the fact that you will have to alter the grill to make this thing fit. Now, don't let that scare you because there's a real easy way to do it, and I'll cover all of that. So here's the emblem. It's a very high quality emblem, a little bit thicker. It's due to this back that you have to cut the back out of the grill so this can slide in there to illuminate. Um, what will happen is, and this is a perfect um, replica of the Dodge emblem that came off, and I'll show that here in a second, uh, but it was this, when it lights up, what you see in black will shine white and give the car a really cool effect. A lot like what Acura is doing and Mercedes is doing. This is the old emblem. Uh, not going to lie, it's a pain in the ass to get off because they put a piece of 3M tape right here. And you have these clips that really hold it in place. But the problem is, no sooner do you pop this top clip and you pry it down like that, away from the grill, then you go to pop the bottom. Well, the, floor, the front rocks back in and relocks. So it's, it's kind of a really a pain in the neck to do. I was able to get one corner up used a nice nylon pry bar. Again, nothing metal here. You don't want to booger this thing up because these grills aren't cheap. But I got a corner up to where I could go in and just get my fingers in there and then I could pop these off and eventually it just popped off. And you saw that right there represents the, the sticker behind it. Now, uh, I'm going to cover how to go through this. Most people should be already familiar how to access their, their truck to get into the grill. If you've changed the headlights now there are ways you can don't have to remove the grill to do that uh, videos on that but I'll, I've already taken this apart because I wanted to see what I was getting into before I go make a video and you see all the screw-ups I do versus what I did to figure things out um, you're gonna have some just some interior clips right here you got one two three four five six on here get the right tool get underneath there pop them up one in a corner this piece will come up and when you do that, then you get start to get access to everything here. Now, in this particular model, there are shutters in behind here, I guess for cold starts, things like that. And I can't get direct access in there. So to get into this grill, you're going to have a 10 millimeter bolt on the far edges and two 10 millimeter bolts here in the center. Now, keep in mind, those bolts are different. The ones here at the edge are going into plastic, so they're more coarse thread, a little bit longer. These are machine threads, or a little finer thread on that. You're gonna take those off, and when you do, um, grab a wrench here, you'll be able to get this grill completely off. And I'll show you what you're kind of getting into here. Now, again, I've already done a lot of my work here so I can figure things out, and then do a real demo, and, and, and or a video and make it good. This is gonna pop up, come loose. You're gonna have some compression clamps on the back here that holds that grill in. What I find best is if I can just pry it off in the front here and get a finger in there, then I can just gently pry off there. Now be careful not to drag it across your bumper here. If you do, you'll just get scratches. So this is just gonna come off, and when it comes off, it's one solid piece. Now you're gonna see a hole here, but where my factory badge was, it would have fit in just like that, that's where you would have had that tape and you would have had those clips that you have to get off there. Kind of a pain in the neck, but you'll, you'll get it. Um, get this badge off, be careful, because you, you, you can't reuse it once you do, because you can see, you do that, your, your grill is permanently altered. It, you're, there is no going back. Once you go this far, you're in. Um, so, but uh, save that, because it's a pr pretty cool item to have, and you can save it, put it up in your shop, do anything with it. My garage, anytime I take a badge off, I reuse the badge just for decoration purposes. I'm going to put one bolt back in this just to secure this back down. And I'll show you why here in a second. Um, I'll reposition the camera. We'll come back. All right, so when you take your badge off, this piece is going to be in place. It's going to be one solid piece. Now, again, I removed mine. You can see the 3M tape that's kind of holding it. And this is bowed a little bit. 
where you get that rocking effect which makes it really big pain in the ass to get off. Now the kit comes with this template. Now this template is a perfect fit, goes in here, and what you do with that is you put it in there. Now I, you know, again, it rocks back and forth because this is con concave, convex, whatever you call it, uh, to where, you know, it's, it's bowed. But you're going to take a drill and you're going to drill each one of these holes out. Get a drill bit that's pretty close to those sizes and that, 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 those holes, and that's important. But you're going to go through and drill all those out and make a pattern. There's probably 200 of these. You get wore out doing it. But that's going to give you a pattern to go through to where you're going to etch this uh, centerpiece that comes out. And when you do, this piece is going to be in there, and you're going to take a drill with just a normal auger bit, and you're going to go around and connect those holes. Now, I recommend pushing that bit all the way into that, that drill as much as possible so you get the least amount of flex on this bit because you don't want this thing snapping, going into your eye, causing you to go blind, anything like that. But you're going to go through where all those drills are, go up here in the top, and you're just going to spin it, and you're going to basically connect all those around. Now, as you're drilling in this, notice this is a Laramie Edition. I have this type of uh, grates in my grill here. They do extend in right here and on this edge, and you'll feel that because you'll go to drill in, you're going to feel that, that hit. Don't try to drill through it right away. Just pull the bit out a little bit. You're just trying to penetrate this pla plastic right there. So you're going to go through, you're going to connect all of those together and basically cut that big rough piece out, and you can see how it's kind of jagged, all of that. Now, some of the videos that I saw talked about filing it down. That's a major pain in the ass because, again, you're, you just you can't get a lot of bite on this, and you can't clean it up real well. Plus, you have to take a lot of that grill out of there. Not to mention, these pieces in back, and you may or may not be able to see them here, they extend into that opening a little bit. So what I found to really be a great, great tool here is, again, going with a stepper bit or a uni bit, whichever you want to call it, and then just drilling through there and making sure you got it level. Don't go in like this because then you're going to get a beveled edge on that. You don't want that. Uh, but take the drill and go through, and those teeth right there, those, those will cut little chunks out of this. You can see them. They're fine little chunks that come out of there. And it gives you a really good way to control the cut that you're making so you don't go gouging out the side of this and taking some of the meat away from this grill that you need to adhere that uh, new emblem to. So the other thing it really helps for is those pieces in back that are connected to these grates. I could go in behind those and just grind those down as much as I needed to in a very controlled fashion to make this a super, super clean cut. Now, after you get close to the cut, you may need to go back in and file and do some final changes or alterations just to make sure that it's what you want and that it'll fit. Now, here's the way this is going to work. The wiring harness is going to slide in, and you're going to test this. Just make sure it fits in there. I've got mine a pretty tight fit. But what you're looking for is how does that emblem line up into that slot where it usually goes. Because if you take too much off to the left and you're shifting that emblem down, you may be riding up on this edge too much and have too much of a gap here. But you don't want it to be super loose to where you don't have anything to get that 3M tape on. Because what you're going to do here is you've only got that much surface for this 3M tape to go around. Now, with that, you're going to take this 3M off, you're going to clean up with alcohol, you're going to do all the normal shit you do all the time in putting emblems on cars. Clean that up. If you don't know how to do that, it's probably already over your head. But you're going to put this in there, you're going to pull this tab, you're going to get that 3M out. Now, I'll show this in another part of the video clip as well, but they're going to give you these stoppers. So this is going to go in behind that grill, and these little stoppers are going to go on. They give you little markings here. And that just helps hold this thing into place so it doesn't come off. Um, totally up to you if you're okay with that. Uh, if you're in fear that it's not enough, you could, on the other side, take black uh, ATV silicone or clear, whatever you want to put in there, to make sure that this thing doesn't go anywhere. Again, it's $189, uh, but I'm pretty certain they've got it figured out because they would have gotten complaints about that, and I haven't seen any bad reviews on it. Uh, it's going to get your car really dirty with all these shavings. Make sure once you take this grill out, and again, I attach it with one bolt here so this grill stays in place. I don't want it falling down and messing any of this finish up. Uh, I don't want that to happen. Uh, the other thing you're going to do is watch, is when you're getting busy with this drill, 
and you're connecting those holes, you're kind of rocking back and forth to give it some cutting effect. You don't, what you don't want to do is slip out and then bam, gouge and get a nice scratch through there. If you do, you're never going to be able to take care of that. It's, it's forever going to be there. You're going to know it's there. You're going to get pissed off every time you see your truck because it's got a nice, big, beautiful emblem on it that's lit up. But you know you put that scratch in there. It wasn't a rock. It wasn't anything else. It was just carelessness on your part and what you did. So that's how we cut this opening. I'm going to get it cleaned up. I'm going to get that attached to it. I will show you how it looks once it's done and uh, how it blocks in and everything like that. So I'm going to get to vacuuming this up before I forget that. But once we do that, it's a real simple process because we're going to run all the, the light controls or the wires over to that, the driver's side uh, headlight on a U.S. version and uh, do it. So we'll, we'll get to it here and uh, get it going. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned this up with alcohol. Um, you do, if you're using a regular paper towel, you're going to get little pieces in here on the side. That's, that's not going to affect anything. Uh, slide your wires in through there. Get your emblem almost put in. Double check it. Make sure it's what you want it to be. They bring you a little tab here. If you are ever doing a, an emblem application and you don't have a tab for the uh, protective film that goes on the sticky side, all you got to do is peel it back about an inch fold it over to where a 90 degree bend and bring it up because then you can put the emblem almost on whatever you're attaching it to and then just pull that out now you can't push like hell on that thing because it's not going to come out i mean use common sense but you can just lightly put it up there and that will give you enough clearance to pull this out so you'll see what i'm going to do here so now i'm just pulling the tab on that exposing the 3m tape all the way around if it gets kind of hard, just be gentle with it. Work with it because you don't want it to be in this state here, half of it being exposed for stickiness and half of it not. Press it into place firmly. Use common sense. Don't go out there and put, you know, a shit ton of force on this and crack your, your grill and be pissed. Now, you're going to need a, a couple seconds, you know, probably about a minute worth of pressure on this because you're trying to get that to adhere to the grill. If it's really cold, you can very quickly and carefully, do not overexpose, but you can hit that 3M tape with a heat gun to make it a little more active, a little more sticky. Uh, I've done that before to where I get a real good seal on that. Now, I'll continue to press this in place. Nobody needs to see how to do that uh, to get it in there. But you can see, you know, I've got some, just some shavings on here where I cut it. I'll blow all that off, clean it up. But that's beautiful. That looks dead on the regular factory emblem you can't tell a difference the only time you're going to tell a difference is when i light that bad boy up and uh, i'll show you that here pretty soon all right so here's the back side of this this is sitting on my 70 monte carlo it's still protected don't light me up for doing so my kids get onto me all the time so i'm unrestored yet um, I don't know if you're able to see this very well, and I'll probably pull it off just to show you a video here in a second of what everything's going on back here. Uh, but there's these little blocks we got to put on next, and uh, I will pull the camera off the tripod. Uh, it'll be a little shaky, but we'll do it here so everybody can get the right perspective on things, uh, what we're trying to do here. All right, so here's the emblem on the back side. As you can see right there, I had to make, sorry, it's hard to do, point and look through a screen, see where I had to cut this out because this grill, these inserts, grates, went into where that would be on both the top and the bottom. Now, on the side of this emblem, they give us two markings where these little clips are supposed to be between here. Well, I'm not going to be able to accomplish that. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is put that block there. Now, you're going to clean both sides of the surface up and this adhesive comes off and actually sticks to the emblem itself and it'll rest on there like that. Those are just kind of to lock it into place to give it a little more reinforcement to where it doesn't pull off. Again, if you feel uncomfortable that that's just not enough and dude, 3M tape, you know, you can almost secure bricks together on a house. You could go through there and apply some clear or black ATV silicone, whatever you want to do just to make sure that bad boy is not going to go anywhere. Uh, maybe if you're four-wheel, you do a lot of rough terrain, maybe that's an option you want to do just to isolate that thing from bouncing or coming off. 
Um, especially if you do see it coming off, not a big deal. You just disconnect it, pull the grill off, do what you need to do, get it done. One thing I'm going to recommend is this is set up to be hardwired. I'm going to put a two-prong plug on this because this grill does have to come off if you need to get into your vehicle. Uh, to change lights, it's a lot easier. You don't have to remove that grill just to get to that bolt right there to get this headlight assembly out. You can go down in there with a bunch of extensions. I've seen videos of how that can be easily accomplished to get that bolt out. But okay, folks, now you're going a foot down into a tiny hole trying to get a bolt in. How do you do that? Um, so that's what the grill looks like when it's off. And uh, we'll get to putting those locks on the back of that and wiring this thing up here soon. All right, so I've cleaned up the locations where these blocks are going to go. I'm going to call them block locks, locks, blocks, whatever you want. Peel the 3M tape off. That's always a joy trying to get 3M tape protection off. Um, you get a corner, you can do that. Now, be careful when you use alcohol to clean this up. Again, use some, some common sense here. Make sure that surface dries completely before you go applying anything. 3M tape is going to go to the black part here on the headlight assembly. I'm going to basically just put it down into place here as close to that, hold it from the bottom, make sure it's getting good contact, push it down into place as hard as I can, it's a little hard with those grates, and then push it up against that to lock it into place. Again, hold for about 30 seconds with you know a fair amount of pressure to where that adhesive on that 3M tape can lock into place. All right, so we'll go to the next. I already cleaned that up. My thumbs are clean because we're during the COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, so my hands have been extremely clean lately. Again, this side here, I'm going to push this lock all the way down as far as I can and then push it into the emblem. Now I can push on both, give it about 30 seconds to really give it some hold time and that way it just locks this thing into place. And I'll show you that by taking the camera off the tripod here in just a second of what it would look like. So that's pretty daggone tight. Um, we'll do another shot here to show you what it looks like up close. All right, so there's the lock. You can see it is right in between those grates for that. Same side here, it's pushed down as far into the uh, the grill itself, it just kind of locks that thing into place and you can see the wire coming through everything so that's sealed up. Again, if you want to use ATV silicone, have at it. Uh, whatever you want to do to make sure that thing fits in there, stays snug, things like that. I don't think there's a need to because the 3M tape is extremely, extremely strong. Uh, they use it to put on all kinds of things on cars nowadays. So I will get to putting this grill back on and dealing with the wire next. All right, so where did I wire this thing into? Uh, some folks may choose to actually wire it into that light there. However, I am not a fan at all wiring into anything factory harness if possible. So what I'm choosing to do is go directly to the fuse box. Now by doing that, over here you've got a nice screw that you can bond this thing to ground right there, a factory uh, bond for ground. Coming up, now, don't fault me for this. We are in the coronavirus, so I'm not going to go out to my local uh, AutoZone shop today uh, because there's better things to worry about keeping myself isolated, but I'm getting bored. Got to do shit around the house. This very first fuse here allows you... Let me turn the light on here. There we go. That allows you to have an accessory when the car is in accessory mode or turned on it will turn this fuse on. Now, what I will eventually do is this wire will come out from that factory location. I'll put an add a fuse in here like I did, and I'll put a timer relay in there. So when I turn the vehicle off, what will happen is, is that this emblem will stay on uh, for you know 30 seconds, a minute and a half, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, infinite, whatever I want it to do, uh, just so it gives it an even cooler effect. When I park the vehicle, everybody can see that emblem staying on for just a couple minutes after the vehicle's off to give it a different look. Again, it's just to be unique. I mean, that's why we do what we do to these vehicles. Now, the other thing is, is this wire routed up. It routed up between, you can see it kind of going right between these locations right here. Uh, hard to do that on a camera coming up. I will go ahead and wire tie that up, get it out of the way. It sneaks in behind all this metal, comes out, 
literally right on the side of this box here and then comes up that way i've got it all protected out of the way you can't tell that this is not supposed to be in this vehicle um you know that nothing drives me bonkers than having like this red cable there i see that red cable i know that's not a factory cable so when i get this thing wired up with my timer relay and i'm probably going to sneak it right in between the, this uh, block here and attach it to this piece uh, i will make sure that's all heat shrinked up to where no color is showing at all um, you know i mean that can that's acceptable that's a battery cable it has to be uh, red to warn people not to do stupid shit with it but i will get this thing to where you don't see just stray cables going in there and all of it you know make it look like it's not factory so uh, but that's it uh, pretty cool easy install it's not bad uh, may intimidate a few people going in drilling out that back section total time without doing this on a camera probably about a half hour to an hour depending on how quick you are take your time I'd rather it be an hour than to be a half hour and screwed up uh, don't get into a rush on these type of products or projects so um, that's it I'm going to wrap this thing up and get this uh, car back on the, on the road here.